electric actuators that have linear motors as their drive trains in them are great for high performance applications, especially when they're applied correctly. However, there's one type of application where we really hesitate before we apply them in that situation, and that's vertical applications. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us here at this information below. We're always happy to help. Let's see what we can learn. First off, let's talk about what the problem is with linear motors and vertical applications. You can refer to earlier episodes in the motion control show to see what linear motors are and how they're different from ball screws and belt and pulleys. But just a quick reminder here, so this is a big magnet here. It's a big series of magnets. And this carriage right here has a, a coil in it that slides up this U. So the magnets, in this case, it's an ironless uh, linear motor. It has a U and it has an I that goes right up through those magnets. So there's nothing touching there. There's no mechanical advantage. So the whole load is actually supported by this bearing here. Uh, here is a different type of linear motor. It's an iron core in this case. Again, the whole load is supported by these bearings. And it has a coil here and it has magnets underneath this carriage. If all that's supporting the load here is these bearings, this slides very easily back and forth when it's horizontal. When the power is off, you can just run it up and down those bearings because there's nothing stopping it. A ball screw, you can't do that. You have to really push against it. So what happens when we take this actuator and we put it vertically? Well, it's going to fall like a rock. One solution is using a counterbalance. Here is a pneumatic one here. Here is a magnetic one here. Those are both different solutions to the same problem, that when the power goes off, it's going to stop it from dropping like a rock. Uh, this one, the pressure has to be adjusted a little bit in order for it to bounce out, balance out properly. Now, I've actually worked on a, a linear motor in a vertical application that was maybe six feet in travel, and it had a big uh, pneumatic actuator next to it holding it. What was really interesting, of course, was if you turned off the power, you had to adjust the pneumatic pressure just right so that it didn't actually push the actuator up when it was off or it didn't let it drop. Had to kind of find that balance in between where the pressure was right for it to basically be zero load when, uh, when the power was off. Another approach to the solution is a rail brake. So here is a linear guide that the load might be resting on. And this is a pneumatic brake that can clamp onto the rail and hold it in place. So it's basically a linear version of a brake that might go on the back of a servo motor or on the end of a ball screw. Uh, there's a couple of variations on this. There's one for uh, round rails. There's other ones out there on the market, I'm sure. This is just something else to consider for linear motors in vertical applications. I'm Corey Foster of Valen Corporation. Reach out to us with this information here. I hope that helped.